Switch off. Wing flaps. Up, switch off. Close pumps. Off. Cow flaps. Open locked. Left and right. Idle cut off. Props. High RPM locked. Flight controls. Unlocked. Trim. One, two, three set. Rock and break the set. Roger that. AC. IDC pump. Chip lock check. Can't fire stuff at all. Okay. Okay, so we're in the cockpit of the B-17 G model, aluminum overcast. This is a mix of very modern and World War II era in terms of uh, instrumentation. Uh, starting over here, we have the electrical panel, which is largely intact, although there's certain things that aren't uh, there anymore. And the pilot had considerably more over here in terms of the ability to salvo the bombs, for instance. And then there was a lot more clutter because there was oxygen and, and uh, over here they have uh, fewer instruments. Right here, didn't have an attitude indicator. The attitude indicator was centered in the panel and there was only one. So there were fewer flight instruments here. Uh, these are the feather buttons up high here. And they're a relocation from previously being down here. Uh, the glare shield had considerably more because it had bombe doors and, and other instruments here. And in fact, the windshields had an additional windshield, which was much thicker, bulletproof, and had a wiper and some de-icing capability. We have modern audio panel and GPSs. This aircraft is capable of IFR flight, and we do go IFR. Uh, the uh, Supercharger control used to be right here. That's no longer here. And uh, so that would uh, that would uh, run the turbocharger settings. And down in this low area was occupied by the autopilot previously. Over here is the most correct to World War II. The instrumentation is as it was. Over here, though, we've added. Uh, engine uh, filter, we have a, a screen type filter, an additional oil filter, so we have chip detectors and bypass lights added. We have the engine primers here, and then the starting switch, it's, it's a rather uh, hands full for two pilots to start the airplane because you start by having clearance on the, from the ground that the props clear, and then you engage a starter and you spin the starter up for 10-12 seconds and then you mesh that starter 
to the engine, which starts the engine cranking. When you toggle the mesh switch, you also start the ignition exciter, which gives you uh, more mar magneto spark and a better spark. Um, at the same time, the, pi the pilot in the left seat is toggling the switch on after counting nine blades, so turning on the magneto and then waiting for the engine to start on the primer by watching the tachometer. And once the engine is running on the prime, the mixture comes in to an auto-rich setting initially, and uh, then the engine is self-sustaining running on its own. The throttle assembly in a B-17 is unique. It, it wasn't carried over to other aircraft in the Boeing line, and it has uh, a friction lock here, and forward with this friction lock locks all the throttles into place. Aft with the friction lock locks two and three, but allows you to work one and four. And that's uh, often how they flew formation, by locking two and three in a position and then just working one and four. Uh, one and four can be operated by grabbing the top two throttles here, two and three by grabbing the bottom, or to operate all four engines at the same time, grabbing in the middle gets you those top and bottom splits of the throttles so you can work all four throttles. These are the propeller controls for the Curtis Wright 1820s. And again, these are the mixture controls. Cow flaps are one of the hydraulic items on the aircraft. Uh, there's also hydraulic for the brakes, but that's the extent of it on the airplane as it is today. Uh, previously, they used hydraulics also for gun charging, but we don't have that. Uh, the rudder pedals are fully adjustable fore and aft. And the brakes are on both sides. However, the parking brake is a little bit unique in that to set the parking brake is done only from the co-pilot's position and only released from the co-pilot position. Uh, down low here we have tailwheel lock and unlock. We have flight control lock and unlock. And rudder trim down low on the uh, floor there. Right now the controls are locked so the rudders don't move. The elevator is full forward and then there's a, a aileron lock that's independent of the flight control lock that's on the floor there. Uh, interesting, Model 299, the first V-17 ever built, uh, was uh, suffered a fatal accident during its demonstration for the Army Air Corps at Wright-Patterson, and it uh, crashed, and the likely cause was taking off with the flight controls locked. Oh, dear God. Once the uh, accident investigation was concluded, it led to a significant change in operating an airplane uh, something that we're all familiar with today, which is a uh, checklist. It mm. didn't exist until then. Wow. So the Model 299 crash is, uh, what good did come out of it is uh, a, a solution to that problem, and it's uh, the uh, concept of a checklist. Mm. Okay, Hollywood's ready on check. Right.
5017 November. Wing 5017 November, here is Billy Brown, now 10 minutes 3006, go ahead. Yes sir, we'll be taxiing momentarily, uh, we'll be VFR local flight around the valley, uh, about 20 minutes in duration, uh, just want to let you know. Okay, great, uh, did you need flight following or are you just going to stay away? Uh, no sir, we'll just uh, be VFR. Roger, thanks. Uh, the wind is light variable right now, 070 at 6. Thanks, we're uh, requesting 130. Holy shit. 